Hello! In today's pre-lecture video, we're going to be talking about the end of chapter 4. We're going to be talking about concentrations and titrations. So, concentration... Uh. is going to be an amount of solute um, per an amount of solvent or solution. The most common is amount of solution, but there are a couple that can also be amount of solvent. Um, the most common concentration unit we're going to look at in this class is molarity, which is abbreviated as a uppercase M, and it is moles of solute over liters of solution. So we're talking about the volume of solute plus solvent. So both of them together. So a lot of times when making a solution at a specific concentration, you're going to put in the solute and then you're going to add the solvent until you reach that desired solution volume so that you take into account the volume of that solute. So um, these are very easy problems, you're just going to make sure that you convert all your solute into moles and then divide by your total volume of solution in liters. Okay, we can also look at something called molar concentration of ions. So if we have things, uh, ionic compounds, we know that they break down into ions. So sometimes we want to know about ion concentrations. This is really helpful in um, medical in the medical field in general looking at those ion concentrations but you're going to have the moles of ions divided by liter of solution so keep in mind if you have something like calcium chloride so if you have one mole of calcium chloride for every one mole Calcium chloride, you produce one mole of calcium ions. But for every one mole of calcium chloride, you also produce two moles of chlorine ions. So look at your chemical formula so you can figure out how those mole ratios work. So now that we know how to use um, or know how to determine molarity, we can look at converting between volume, molarity, and moles. So if you have um, a molarity and you know how many liters of your solution you have, so your molarity of your solution, which is moles of solute over liters of solution. If you want to figure out your moles of solute, you're just going to multiply that by your liters of solution. And from there you can solve for your moles of solute. So for instance, if you had a one molar solution and you had 100 liters of it, you'd have 10 moles of that solute within that 10 liters. Next, um, of course, if we want to figure out molarity, we're just going to take, go from grams into moles of solute, and then from, usually you're looking at milliliters, you go into liters of solution. Again, taking into account this is going to be solute plus solvent and then if you divide those out you'll get to your molarity and this liter down here does not need to be one um, after you solve for it you understand it as a one um, but if you had four moles of solute eight liters of solution you take that four divided by eight giving you 0.5 molar 
Next, if we want to figure out how many or how, what volume we need in order to um, get a specific amount of moles, you can take your moles of solute and divide it by molarity, which is mole solute divided by a liter of solution. And by doing that, you can get your liters of solution. So if you take your moles that you want, divide it by the molarity that you have, you can figure out how many liters you need in order to get that. Okay. Another way of looking at that is moles of solute multiplied by one over liters of solution. There's one over molarity. We give that liters of solution. Okay. Now, um, one of the most common things we're going to be doing with all of this is we're going to be um, bringing concentration into stoichiometry. So if we have um, a volume of solution, and molarity of solution, we can bring this into our stoichiometry roadmap. So taking our volume of solution, and taking it and multiplying it by the molarity of substance A, we can then get to moles of A. Right, and once we have moles of A, so if we have A goes to B, we can then use a mole ratio and that's how you can get to your moles of B okay, using just a simple mole to mole ratio okay now another thing we're going to do with concentrations is dilutions If you have a stock solution, that's a highly concentrated solution at a specific volume, you can take that, or sorry, specific concentrations. You can take that stock solution and dilute it down. This will save you time um, in the long run. So you do, uh, in order to figure out how much of your stock solution you need in order to make a specific dilution, you use the equation C1 times by V1 is equal to C2 times by V2, where C1 is your concentration of stock. or just your higher concentrated thing. V1 is volume of stock. Solution. C2 is desired concentration. And V2 is desired volume of dilute solution. So it doesn't really matter what concentration units we use, as long as they're the same between C1 and uh, C2. It doesn't matter what volume unit we use, again, as long as V1 and V2 are in the same volume unit. Now, we, at this point, only know molarity as a concentration, so we actually use this equation, which is the same equation, we're just specifying that we are using molarity. So 
So this is a pretty easy thing to use. Um, so let's say we have a stock solution. with a concentration of 2.0 molar. So this is our stock solution. And we want to make 50.0 milliliters of a 0.25 molar solution. So here, we are given our volume here. So that's a desired volume, so that would be V2. Here we have a desired concentration, so that would be M2. And here we have a stock solution concentration, so this would be M1. And you just plug and chug. So we have 2.0 molar times by V1 is equal to 50.0 milliliters times by 0 0.25 molar. And when we do this, we get a V1 equal to 6.25 milliliters or 6.3 milliliters with the correct number of sig figs. And what this means is that this is how much of our stock that we need to dilute to 50 milliliters. So we would add water in if that's our solvent. Uh, we take that 6.3 milliliters of the stock solution and then add in water until we have a total volume of 50 milliliters. Okay, next topic I wanna talk about and last one for chapter 14 is titrations. A titration is a um, analytical technique that's used in order to determine a concentration of an unknown. So, there are several different types of titrations that you can do. The only one we're going to look at is an acid-based titration. And this is based on a neutralization reaction. So here, we have our acid reacting with our base, and when they fully react, we get water and a salt. And this is at a pH of seven, when these are in one to one mole ratios. So we use that idea that we would be at a neutral pH um, once we have our titration uh, completed um, to use uh, to figure out our unknown. So we're going to have different things within a titration. We have what's called an analyte. Here this is the solution with the unknown concentration. So this is going to be an acid or a base in the case of an acid-base neutralization titration. Our next is our titrant. So a titrant is a standard solution at a specific concentration um, or like our stock solution, right? Yeah. 
So we have this titrant. It has a specific concentration, um, and it again is also going to be an acid or base, or or I'll write it as a base or acid. So if you have your analyte being an acid, your titrant will be a base, and vice versa. Then you're going to have an indicator. And an indicator is there to tell you when we've completed our reaction. It will change color at a pH of 7. This is in the case of an acid base reaction when our H plus ions and OH minus ions are stoichiometrically equivalent, which means that these are in equal molar amounts. All right, so our H plus plus our OH minus reaching our water. So if we have a diprotic acid, we're going to need two bases to balance it out. So this is based on our um, balanced equation. So we have to do a balanced equation to figure this out. So what happens um, is we've got a burette. This burette has our titrant in it. Okay, so it has some metal liquid in here. And then below this, we have a beaker or an Erlenmeyer that has our analyte. The analyte, we have a specific volume of it. A volumetric flask is used in order to determine this. So we have our analyte, um, and you add in the titrant. Doop, doop, doop. Oh, sorry, there's also in here there's also an indicator. So you've got a beaker with analyte indicator and you add in your titrant dropwise until you basically reach the end of your reaction. So if we look at a graph, we take our volume of titrant added versus the pH of the analyte solution. So we are monitoring this pH and we're also monitoring added volume of titrant, which will initially be zero, right? So before we add anything in, our volume of titrant will be zero. And then we dropwise add in titrant and over time, our pH of our analyte solution will change. So it is going to be based on whether we have an acid analyte titrated with a base or a base analyte titrated with an acid. So we'll look at both of these cases. So if we're starting out with an acid, we're going to start out with a pH that's low. And it's going to increase over time. And then it's going to go like so. Right here is when we have equal molar amounts <coughs> of our hydroxide and our hydronium. Okay, and then that will actually be write that in a different color. That will be at our pH of seven. Okay, we'll do it the other way. Looking at a base analyte titrated with the acid, we're going to start at a higher pH. And we're going to have a very similar looking thing, but just opposite. Looking like that. Okay. 
So as we increase our amount of titrant, we're either going to increase our pH if, we're, if we have an acid analyte, or we're going to decrease our pH if we have a base analyte. Okay. So these problems that we're going to be doing with titration is we're going to be looking at our volume of our analyte, our volume of our titrant, and our um, our concentration of our titrant to figure out what our concentration of our analyte is and therefore um, solving the problem. So we will have in a titration problem generally these things will be done. We will know the concentration of the titrant. We will know volume of titrant required to reach equivalence. And we will know volume of analyte. It's not always what we'll know, but this is generally the things we'll know. So in general, the way that you approach titration problems is you're going to start out with your volume of titrant in liters and you're going to take and multiply this by the molarity of your titrant. Remember that's going to be moles of titrant over liters of solution. And when you multiply that out, you're going to get moles of titrant. After that, you're going to use your mole to mole ratio between your moles of your titrant and the moles of an analyte, which is going to be gotten from your balance equation. and that will give you your moles of your analyte. Once you have your moles of your analyte, you have your volume of your analyte known, so you're going to divide by your liters of analyte solution, and that will give you your concentration of analyte, which is almost always what you're looking for in these problems. Okay, we'll do an example in class, but that should give you the general idea of how to do all the problems we're going to look at in our next class. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see y'all later.